the final thing that I want to cover here is the idea of massless particles, because this is our jumping off bridge to where things start to get really weird. And just, just as kind of, you know, a, a, a bit of a background, obviously, with Newtonian kinematics, in order to have momentum, <laughs> you got to have two things. you got to have mass, and you got to have velocity. So, with that in mind, let's see what happens when we apply Einstein's new equation for relativistic energy and consider a certain subclass of particles. So, start with the energy, the relativistic energy. And recall, E squared equals PC squared plus M not C squared squared. And again, this is the kinetic term, essentially, and this is the rest energy term. Now, let's assume M or M not is zero. So we're going to take a massless particle, a particle that is somehow exists, but it doesn't have whatever that M characteristic or property associated with it is. Um, it's, th th I, I'm refraining from, from delving deeper into what mass is, uh, but let's just say what, how our mass is, 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 you know, attained in the universe, the particle lacks the ability to attain that mass. And hopefully many of you see I'm talking about the ability to interact with the Higgs field, is what it is. So, with that said, let's go ahead and take that assumption, m not equals zero. So we have now, when that goes away, you can just get rid of those squares. So E equals PC. So if you consider an example of a particle without a mass, you know, and, and I hope you understand here, that that would be, you know, a photon. I don't want to use that word yet because the photon is is an invention uh, that was almost a joke. You know, I mean, like, it didn't really make any sense, but we threw it out there anyway for quantum physics, and turns out that we believe now to be correct. It's a particle without a mass. But let's look more specifically at it here. The energy, which is a very well-defined thing from quantum physics, and even from before quantum physics, we, we understood that the energy of wavelengths varies as the wavelength. So, so if you have blue light and red light, the one with the shorter wavelength will have the higher energy. So we already knew that before quantum physics. But the energy of the particle is based on P times C, or the momentum of that massless particle equals E over C. So we have a brand new set type of particle that has no mass, but it has momentum. And this seems to obey, disobey everything that Newton would have talked about, about momentum. You know, it's, it's the amount of physical stuff that's rolling along to have some sort of, like, physically significant mass and velocity, motion, you know. And so it's momentum, when I talk about it in, like, a Physics 1 course, is it's the, the most intuitive notion of motion <laughs> for us. Um, that really, when we think about, like, the amount of motion going on, our brains instinctively kind of want to gravitate towards the idea of momentum being the more fundamental thing. Because when you see a semi-truck rolling by at 10 miles an hour, you know there's a lot more motion going on than, a, 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 you know, like a, a Prius going at 30 miles an hour. You know, so this is something that seems to be completely at odds with everything that Newton had said. But, you know, again, as we go further and further, things just stop making sense according to intuition. And we'll find that this can be more and more true in quantum physics. But we do now have a particle that has no mass, but it has non-zero momentum. So this is a strange thing. But the cool thing about this now is that when we start to analyze this according to some basic ways of, of looking at particle and wave motion in, in the foundations of quantum theory, this is going to be a really, really important uh, equation to come back to because this is what's actually going to guide us to ultimately Bohr's interpretation of, of the atom. Um, so that's really all I have to say about this, but it's such an important thing to, to uh, uh, understand that you can have a particle that has no mass but it can still attain momentum, at least according to relativistic theory. So once we get to this in a few weeks in, in quantum physics, this is where really just, you know, I, I think these very esoteric theories that, you know, shouldn't really relate, turns out they make such in, in perfect predictions with what we see experimentally that 
all of this stuff is actually true, whether or not we want to believe it.